Now we'll be talking about some of the plants I like to see around my fruit trees. And one of those is comfrey. And I'll, I'll get into the details of it. But there comes a point after you go through those four or six years of growing wood structure, you start to fruit, you're now haphazard mulching, the tree's getting bigger, there's more shade, it's a little bit more suppressed, other growth underneath the tree in that fungal duff zone. Um, you get something like comfrey growing, which one of its aspects is gets two, three feet tall, falls over, suppresses growth, a new flush comes on, it acts like a living mulch. It, it becomes a lot easier once you get things going, you know, once you get the trees established. So let's, let's just talk about a couple of looks just to get into that. So my, my point here is we're just thinking about fungal duff. How can we make this more of a fungal duff? In permaculture, one of the things that people like to put energy into is what's the design of my fruit guild? What are some of the companion plants? So part of this is about root space, that tap roots are not the same as a dense sod, eco sod system. Um, some of this is about plants that attract certain beneficials. Some of this is about plants that accumulate certain minerals from the subsoil and make it available at the top of the soil. It's a beautiful idea. One of the mistakes that's often made is you plant the fruit tree, you're excited about your design, so you put the comfrey here and the lovage here and the buffalo berry here, and it's way too crowded for that young fruit tree to be able to grow wood. And you know, eventually, when the tree is six, seven, eight years old, yeah, the comfrey here <laughs> and the lovage here and the buffalo berry, maybe even a little further, that's, that's where that part integrates. A lot of times people get too zoned in on like, I'm going to make it all happen at once. And you have to give the fruit tree some time to grow or, or just plant the other things a little further out. But we'll, we'll get into some of these ecosystem dynamics. This is a vineyard and along the edges of that vineyard are planted, I'm not sure what species of Artemisia. So this is more of a neat look. But the point is, the sod is not right up against the vine. There's more of a fungal duff zone. And a plant like Artemisia's can take the application of woodsy mulch in a dormant season and then come back. Artemisia's also have a, a, a smell factor, which can help possibly in repelling pests or, or making it a little harder to find the plant that's involved. For those who have extensive gardens, um, utilizing the garden space as a place for your fruit trees, particularly if you want to grow dwarf trees, can be really sensible. And that is because when you plant your garlic or your peas or your what have you, your potatoes, which you hill, you are working the ground to keep it more open for your vegetable crop. In the case of garlic, maybe you've mulched it heavily or maybe you're cultivating, but it's more open. And dwarf trees require more open ground. Now, if it's out, the dwarf trees are out in the yard or the pasture, any work to head towards more open ground is, is work just for that. But when you're hilling your potatoes or you harvest your peas, and now you want to plant winter oats, which are going to winter kill. Well, that happens pretty much as the spring feeder root flush is ending, and you can slightly shallowly cultivate in the oat seed to get it going. So that there's a lot of advantages to putting fruit trees in a garden setting if you're doing this on a small scale because you're working the ground to keep it more open. You know, this is a fruit tree um, surrounded by raspberries in the back. There's some rhubarb. Um, one of the things about rhubarb, you know, we all think pies, but if you let rhubarb go to flower, you will see this amazing universe of beneficial insects. So you want to learn to not just think of the human perspective, but rhubarb is also, like many tap-rooted plants, big fat roots, but not a dense cluster of roots. That means there's more room in the humus for apple feeder roots. For, I always say apple. I have to point out if your thing's peach or cherry or blueberries, hear that. I just happen to say apple a lot. Um, then there's some peonies, which my wife likes, loves to grow and, and cut bouquets, and then I have it more heavily mulched in the front. But you can achieve more of a suburban look. I mean, it's, there's different ways to go about this as you understand the different how the different pieces fit, but it's not barren. Yes. Uh, yeah, I got a question. Um, my or part of my orchard looks a, a bit more like your first picture, kind of like wild plants. And people ask me why I don't mow it, and it's a lot of useful native plants like Solomon seal and trillium and 
I mean, it's really like a, a mini forest ecosystem. Yeah. There's a few invasive, like Japanese stilt grass and a few other things, but it's mostly useful native plants, and I'm, I just figure I'd leave them there. Um, maybe supplement them with, with some other plantings and things you're doing. And, but what I do, it, it gets a little crowded around like the base of the tree, so I'll weed eat just like a circle around there. Just thoughts on that? Or? No, that, that's... The principles are about fungal duff, providing fungal foods, tap-rooted plants, bringing up minerals, and forest plants, the natives you're talking about, are doing that as part of their existence. I'm going to get into ideas of mowing with the meadow ecosystem that you see in that picture. And, but, but no, that's fine. You'll, we'll, we'll get a few more slides and we'll see some of that. Fungal duff, you're saying it's just that, that cyclical feeding of fungi. I am talking about an ecosystem where the fungal biomass is 10 times greater than the bacterial because you don't disturb it. You add the kinds of fungal foods that you're going to see on the forest edge that you can get from your resource base on your land and in your surrounding neighborhood. But, but managing that way. We're, we're going to talk very directly about what it means to have a fruit tree in a place where you mow the grass regularly. <laughs>